Hey everyone, Gene here. Today we're diving deep into the world of Java multithreading, specifically the wait notify mechanism. This is a fundamental concept that every Java developer should understand to create efficient and responsive applications. If you're new to this series, be sure to check out the previous video where we explored the synchronization within Java multithreading. It's the perfect foundation for today's lesson. The Java Lang object class provides a suit for methods to control thread synchronization. We have the wait method. This method causes the current thread to wait until it's notified or interrupted. We also have the notify method. It wakes up a single thread that's waiting on this object's monitor. And we also have the notify all method, which wakes up all the threads that are waiting on this object's monitor. But why is this important? Let's bring it to life with a classical example, the producer-consumer problem. Imagine a scenario where a producer thread generates data and a consumer thread consumes it. We can use the wait and notify methods to synchronize their actions, ensuring that the consumer doesn't consume data before it's produced and the producer doesn't produce data if there is no space to store it. Alright, let's build ourselves an example in Java. Let's start right away by creating ourselves a common class, which we call together. So public class together. Here we have one parameter private int number and a second parameter private volatile boolean writable to true. So the number is a value that we just want to get and set and the writable value is one that we want to use as a condition. This will become clear in just a second. Now let's first create a new method public synchronized void set number taking an int number and in here let's define what we want to do. So we first want to make sure that we pass a condition for the producer to wait for the consumer. After that we want to perform some work and after that we want to allow the consumer to work. Alright, let's start by creating a new while loop which checks if the writable is not true and if it is not true then we wait because this means as a producer we cannot continue at this point. But in the case that we can continue we're going to perform some work and the work that we perform is to set the number that the producer brings us. After having done this work we can allow the consumer to work. This can be easily done by setting the writable to false. And then in case that the consumer is currently waiting, we send out a notify that he can continue. All right, let's take a look at a second method, public synchronized int get number. Let's first write down what we want to do. We want to start by checking a condition for the consumer to wait for the producer. After that, we want to do some work. And after that, we want to allow the producer to work. All right, let's start with a while loop, checking if the writable is true. And if it is true, we as the consumer have to wait. But if it is false, we can perform some work. And the work that we want to do is get the number that is saved in this class. So let's quickly copy it into an int variable number copy, because the next step is to set the writable to true and notify a possibly waiting producer. After having done so, we return the value number copy. All right, let's get back to the main method and create a new variable together with a new instance of the together class that we just created. Now it's time to create a new producer class. So let's do exactly that. Public class producer extends thread. In here we want to start by creating a new variable private final together of type together, which we will set in the constructor of producer. Now let's override the run method, which is essentially what this producer thread does. So it all comes down to running the for loop, which starts at one and runs until 10. And in every iteration, it sets the number to i. After having done so, it prints the number i. Let's go back to the main method and create a new instance of producer, passing on the together variable. Now let's build a consumer. Here we have the new class public class consumer extend thread. We also create a new variable private final together, which we set in the consumer constructor. And then we override the run method because the consumer is also a thread running this method. And in the run method, we start by defining ourselves an int variable i, which we set to zero. And then we create a while loop, which is true as long as i has not reached 10. And in this loop, we get the number that is saved in together and put it into the i variable. And right after that, we print it to the terminal. That's all we do in a consumer class. Now let's go back to the main method and create a new instance for it. Just like we did with the producer passing on the together variable, we do the same thing with the consumer. All right, let's start both threads and run the application. And here we can see that whatever we produce, the consumer will get. 
So in most of the cases, this could be enough. We would be already done. But keep an eye on the fact that the producer and the consumer both run in different threads. And they don't only have one instruction. First they handle the together variable, and then they handle the print. And while doing so, it is possible that the other thread is faster, which is shown here that we start with the consumer as an output. If we want to synchronize this to also show the correct output, we need to add a couple of tweaks here. So let's go back to the producer class and put a synchronized block around the set number and the printf method. And we point the synchronizer to the together variable. Now let's go to the consumer class and do exactly the same thing. Here we also add a synchronized block pointed to the together variable around the get number and the printf method. Now let's run the code again. And here we can see the new output with synchronization, where we will always have the guarantee that the producer comes first and the consumer comes second. By mastering the wait and notify methods, you can create elegant and efficient multi-threaded applications. In the next video, we'll delve into the fascinating world of thread local and inheritable thread local, followed by a deep dive into timer and timer task for scheduling tasks. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more exciting content. Thanks for watching and happy coding!